then what is a gain for us to send a spacecraft to another solar system or another planet? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, that's a very uh, good question. Um, there are scientific reasons for going. On the way there, we can learn a lot of things about the interstellar medium. We can learn a lot of things scientifically about the, the host star when we get there. Uh, recently, we've discovered a cornucopia of new planets, exoplanets we call them. And so there is an immense um, a wealth of knowledge and information we, we can acquire um, if we choose to go to a star which has planets in orbit around its solar system. Um, there is excellent evidence out there that there are Earth-sized planets out there in the habitable zone. So this poses tantalizing questions as to the possibility um, are these habitable? Could human beings go there? Could this be a second Earth? Might they even have some kind of organic life on them? So there are just fascinating and profound questions from a scientific perspective. But you know, um, at a deeper level, I think it really goes down to the core of who we are as human beings. You know, we're, we're explorers, we're adventurers, we're a curious and energetic species and going to another star may just be an expression of that. Of course, rewind a little bit. I think there are a wealth of reasons for engaging in space exploration within our own solar system. There uh, is ample evidence that there is an, an abundance of wealth, contain, uh, mineral wealth and resources contained um, within the asteroids. Um, there are estimates of um, about $60 trillion of mineral wealth in one of the closest asteroids to the Earth, and there are hundreds of thousands of such asteroids within our solar system. So there are great reasons, economical reasons, for exploring our solar system. Um, I think there are great scientific reasons today to go into another star. And before reaching the, goal, the end goal of 2100 being the, the, your self-set deadline, what are the short-term goals you, you perhaps do you have anything set in the short term so that the public will see, okay, there is some progress we made to achieve your ultimate goal? You know, I mean, uh, clearly we have um, some financial goals. Uh, we want to raise $25 million to set up a research institute. Um, currently, there's no uh, institute that's specifically devoted to accomplishing interstellar flight. I mean, there are space organizations out there who are looking at exploring our solar system, but no, no, no real dedicated organizations um, that are focused on interstellar flight. So we're looking at um, acquiring seed funding to build um, a research, uh, a base of operations. At the moment, um, our organization, Icarus Interstellar, is virtual. We're spread all over the world. Uh, we get a lot of research done. We've got a lot of peer-reviewed publications. We're making great progress, but I think we can do a heck of a lot more if we're uh, co-located in one physical location. So there's the fundraising side of things. Um, other areas of interest, um, that there are a lot of um, technologies and things that we can demonstrate. One, I would like to see more investment in um, our um, telescopic technology, specifically for the purpose of exoplanets. Now, at the moment, we know of the existence of exoplanets. I think the next stage is we want to do some kind of spectroscopic analysis of the atmospheres so we can see you know is there any planets out there in the habitable zone that have oxygen for example I mean that would be exciting but the next stage would be can we image an exoplanet current telescopic technology doesn't have that capability um, best estimates are about one to two decades out we would actually be able to image or see another planet um, orbiting another star that to me I think will deeply resonate with the public and maybe that kind of critical point that um, really compels us as as a as a as a as a country as a planet as a species to start investing more seriously um, in, in interstellar flight and there are a range of other technologies as well i mean you know if we can demonstrate um a, f a nuclear fusion engine for example which would have the power to to get us uh, generate the kinds of power that would be needed to acquire the kinds of velocities that would get us to a star on time scales of a human lifetime i mean they're, they're just a, a couple of examples all right thank you very much oh my pleasure thank you very much